I'm gonna watch this too. You've just got to sort of stop stewing in your own juices. This is not necessarily for you, for me, for anyone. You've just got to stop that habit of just sitting around thinking about things, overthinking things. Because I think one thing that happens consistently, the natural progression of just sitting around thinking is to get angry, like as in the, uh, the actual emotion of anger. Because the natural, the natural thought will arise that like, Oh, why? Oh, I can't sort the thing out because I'm not doing the thing. I'm just thinking about it. I, I, I can't, you know, I can't find a solution to this thing. I can't do blah. I can't do this, whatever it is, or I'm not doing this. You then just start becoming angry at your own thoughts and annoyed. And, and you're sort of allowing, al allowing the ideas and the thoughts in your own head to, to just sit and ruminate you can have arguments in your own head about stuff. You get pissed off about stuff. You think you've got all the solutions in your own head and you're like, oh, why can't it just be like this? There is no use in that. And that you've kind of just got to learn to let things go. Hi, welcome to a video. It's a video. How you doing? Sable's a good game. I don't know what this is. I don't know why I did it. It was, it's a strange one where I had loads of things to do, other art, other drawings. To be honest, I'm pleased with it. I like the outcome, you'll see. Like the colors come together really nice. I kind of surprised myself with a few, few classic uh, overlay layers uh, that change the colors a lot. Um, but yeah, I don't know why I did it. And it was just sort of like, I wanted to see if I could execute it. And I kind of did. Classic case of, it's an animation and I'm not gonna spend days and days and days and hours and weeks making a perfectly crafted animation. I'm gonna just do the, the sort of almost minimum to make it look cool, um, but maybe it's not super fluid. It's pretty crunchy. Um, but what are you gonna do? I think it looks pretty cool and it loops. Um, Having said that, just as I started recording this little video, I, I realized I've, I've missed out a part of the detail, like the little speeder bike. It's got like a, a red beam of light energy coming out the exhaust. I haven't done that. So I'm gonna have to now go back in and, and put that in. See, what's annoying is it's been a while since I made a video and I've been through, like over the past couple of weeks, I had some good ideas and thoughts of what to talk about. Um, didn't make note of them. And then now, now you're getting this version of me. You weren't get, getting the version of me a week ago who was like, I'm ready to rant and talk and eloquently discuss this idea. You, now you're getting Tuesday morning, should be doing something else, Harry. You're getting unsure of what he's gonna do with the rest of his day, Harry. <sighs> quick, quick Sable thoughts. If you don't know Sable, it's a very cool little open. It's a really cool sort of little open world indie game. It's set in this giant desert, very June-like. It's got that sort of uh, dirty sci-fi look where, where you know, there's lots of me mechanical stuff and everything's kind of grimy. So a bit Star wars -y, I guess. The art style is super cel-shaded. Uh, and in fact, it's definitely heavily inspired by Mobius. Also, gameplay-wise, it almost feels like a, obviously, Story and aesthetic, no, not really. But f f like a few game mechanics wise, um, there's a cool kind of, it's like a sort of like Breath of the Wild light. There's climbing and gliding, but that's not really, when you do it in the game, you don't really think of Breath of the Wild, but it's kind of, it's got the same kind of thing. You collect some stuff, you explore. I mean, primarily it's about racing around on these rad speeder bikes and there's so many cool designs. While I was doing this, 
I initially wanted to maybe do little tiny pixel versions of all the speeder bikes because they're so cool. The one I ended up with was like this dragonfly one that properly like flaps its wings and as it as it's speeding along. Um, but they're so cool, and you can like mix and match. You can mix and match parts. Um, I thought that was just a really cool little mechanic, and it's just a really cute game if you haven't played it. And you, if you like open world games, literally sandboxes as well. Um, well, actually, I guess technically not a sandbox. You can't like mess around with physics, but um, you can just explore. Um, and it's fun. The characters, the writing's really good. Like all the characters speak in a well-written way, like lots of cool mechanics around and little settlements and towns. And that's why I just wanted to do some fan art. I had this idea and I did it and I executed on it. But there are loads of games out, aren't there? There's loads of freaking games. There's loads of games. I am almost done with Fire Emblem Engage. There are so many characters. I've made my peace with the fact that I'm probably not going to get a rank relationship status with all of them. But I'm almost there. It's still really good. Once I finish that, I'm going to move on to Tears of the Kingdom. But in the meantime, me and my friend have started playing Baldur's Gate 3. We're only like four hours in, three hours in. But I can already tell it's incredible. Like everything about it, they just nailed it. I'm excited to keep going. There's just not enough time. That's what I'm struggling with. Not enough time in the day. Not enough time in the day to work, do YouTube stuff, and also enjoy yourself, play some games. Cool, 20, 20, 21st century problems, eh? But other than that, other than games, let's just let's just reflect on, on, on all the work I'm doing. Let's just take a moment so I can sort of, in a weird kind of way, like boast or like tell you how productive I'm being to make you feel bad about how not productive you are. Do you ever feel like that? that that's, that's what those videos are like. Boom, roasted. You know what I mean though? Oh, I don't know. feel like I could, I got a lot of thoughts on just YouTube, art video, YouTube culture. Why, like, number one thing, why is everyone the same? Why is everyone doing the same shit? I know this isn't original, this is just a time lapse or whatever. Why is everyone, why is everyone talking about the same shit? Why, wh uh, what, what's accomplished by me telling, like, updating you on all, like, work that I'm doing? I suppose you're interested, and that's good enough for me. This was just me questioning myself why I'm even talking about it, because in my view, it's kind of just a weird kind of like, hey guys, I'm up to this. This is what I'm up to. What are you doing? Kind of thing. And what's that about? No, it's exciting news. It's exciting news. You know that zine fair I told you about maybe briefly in a video um, that I might get? Well, I did get. I've got a little table at a really cool little zine fair that's in Bristol. Um, so I've been, I've ordered prints. I'm going to maybe make some t-shirts, like a little lino cut t-shirt. That's cool. So I'm going to have my stuff and I'm going to sell it. And who knows if it will sell, but it's a fun vibe anyway. And at the very least, if if things don't sell, and if you're maybe in the if you're in the UK, I'll I'll have stock here. So like I'll have prints, uh, and and maybe I can work out a way to actually sort of offer, make some sort of online shop that works better than the one I've already got. You know, the one I've got at the moment is just a, a print shop, as in P-R-N-T. Or is it in print? I can't remember which one I'm even on. And that's just, you know, that's that's US based. It feels like it's not really mine. It's just like an account I have on a site. So I'll, I'll update you on that. But yeah, I've been working on loads of stuff and I've finished quite a few things. Uh, I videoed some stuff. So that's cool. Everything's kind of ordered. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. It's on like October 8th. Shake Bristol or Shake Zine Fair um, if you want to come along. And it should be good. And then in other work news, I've recently d finished, speaking of t-shirts, I recently, and the reason why, to be honest, I've been like feeling a bit too busy and I've like, I had to try and like do this commission. But um, I've been, I was commissioned to make some t-shirts for um, a local uh, sort of uh, business. Um, uh, it's called Wake the Tiger. It's like a weird sort of kind of experience 
walk through, go see all these arty installation rooms and explore and like there's some mystical storyline they've like built this whole like fictional world but and it's in like this warehouse somewhere in in bristol it's kind of for kids but they're trying to also lean away from kids apparently they're doing like evenings for adults um but there's lots of cool like light rooms and secret passageways it was fun um anyway they've got this whole thing about elemental guilds like four different guilds and they commissioned me to make some t-shirts for their gift shop that they're revamping. So I've been designing like cool little t-shirt designs for for all the elemental like air, fire, earth, water kind of thing. Right up my street. It was a little bit of stress. Like it's always hard doing working with someone new and not be especially when they're, you know, it's a proper business. Let's just say there was a lot of amendments, but um, we've done it. We've, we're there. I kind of wanted the design just to be a little square thing in the middle of the t-shirt But what they're going for instead is like a little emblem here And then my my illustration is like a big back design, but that's fun and it's got my name on as well So it's like on every t-shirt. It'll have a little signature of Harry Sussums. So that's good exposure as well I did get paid. It was a paid gig I was properly paid and that's cool. I'm doing like a whole yearly yearly license thing. So I got a chunk of money um, to do the t-shirts. And then after a year, if they're still using it, they're gonna pay 50% of the previous payment. Just a little glimpse behind the curtain there of the ins and outs of me trying to make my way as a freelance illustrator. Top tips for you. Top tips. While that's been going on, I did do another little commission for someone who made a little GIF um, animation for their music. Just been busy. Still working on the game, game long game commission. Um, that's going good for the next week or so, two weeks. That is basically what I'm gonna be working on mostly. We'll see what I managed to do. I mean, the next content that I'm I'm gonna be making probably is more Dungeon and Dragons-y character design related stuff. I've basically done a fighter, a wizard, a rogue character design, and I'm really excited for them. I think they look really cool. I've made the like the whole image look like some sort of graphics-y, graffiti magazine cover kind of thing, but with Dungeons and Dragons characters. Speaking of art, I recently visited a home a couple of weeks ago and I saw uh, a Van Gogh exhibition installation thing. Um, it was really cool. It, it's like projected all his art on all these giant wall canvases around a giant room. So they were all playing all at once and there was music and it sort of just, and they showed like quotes of him um, and they just went through his whole life and career um, while playing, you know, really intense, cool music and just showing all his art. And it was such a, it was a, it was a really cool idea, um, a really cool way, I think, of just going through a whole exhibition. Rather than just walking around and seeing each piece, they just cycled through all of them. Obviously, you're not seeing it in the flesh, so it's different, but it was a nice way. There were some things that I'd never seen before, like his series of Japanese paintings. Like he was inspired by Japanese art, like woodblock art, but made his own paintings from them. I'd never seen that before. That was really cool. I think I'd seen the cherry blossom one, but he'd done other ones as well and they looked really cool. Uh, and I've seen loads of good films and seen loads of good TV shows as well. Um, we, I, went, I did see Barbie and Oppenheimer, not on the same day, but they were both great. I liked both of them. I think I already told you that Asteroid City was great. And we, we finished watching The Bear. That was a good show. But yeah, I think there was some really good quotes in the Van Gogh thing. Um, and I wrote them down and then I had some thoughts. Well, okay, let's just dial it back. I don't want to give you advice. I don't want to give you tips, tutorials, arty things. I don't know what to say. Not because I don't like you. Not because I don't want to help you. As long as you know I want you to cherish your desire for learning and improvement. I, I think that's great, but I just, I don't think I'm the person to be, I'm not the one and to tell you how to get better, how to improve your art. I mean, if, if just my art can give you a little bit of inspiration, then I think I've done my bit. Yeah, I still haven't started Rick Rubin's book, um, The Creative Act, um, but I know I'm gonna like it. I've got an idea that maybe, I think it's like written really strangely, like the actual formatting of it. It's like quite an experience to read the book and it's like laid out where it just like 
posits ideas and it's like an interesting read, not just like a normal book. Um, so I've got a feeling like maybe, maybe you'll be hearing more about it. But I recently got another book um, that I'm, I'm interested in starting, a really short one. It's called like Gaia and Philosophy. Can't remember who it's by. Funnily enough, at the same time, what I was on the lookout was I was looking out for um, How Do You Live, which is the book that is has inspired Hayao Miyazaki's next film that I've just seen the trailer for, The Boy and the Heron. For starters, the film looks incredible. Um, I find it hilarious that he's always like, this is going to be a, my last film. And I've already heard somewhere that like during the making of this film, he's been inspired to make it. He wants to make another one. So he's still not finished. The film coming out and the fact that it was based on a book has just made me want to read the book. And then next to it, there was like, well, a really cool little guy and philosophy book about classic, classic Poncho Pilgrim belief stuff about about just like the interconnected nature of the entire universe and i was reading it and i was like damn i want to read this anyway we've gone we've gone full circle i'm back round at the start of this video now i opened it by saying something about not ruminating on stuff and you know what it was all based off um something i was thinking about a couple weeks ago and i typed it out really I said I didn't write anything down. I did type something out. Now, this is like a late night rant ramble. This is like me like, yeah, I'm, I've got that idea out. Mm. So maybe it's not the most well-rounded. Maybe it's not the w most well thought out. It was the idea about ruminating things, but also that anger that comes from ruminating and where it's placed. Um, I.e. lots of the time I think, you know, it can be placed anywhere. You ruminate long enough, you can find something to be angry about. And lots of the time, because we're people and we deal with people, um, I, I think that there is a problem with channeling that, that sort of anger and annoyance at just other everyday people rather than the actual problems in the world, you know? And even then, realizing that maybe it's not even that one, per like what's the use of even getting angry at that one person, even if they are the direct... Anyway, not only that, but I often think about how our lives truly are only what we focus on. What we decide is important is what dictates our life. What good does it do to sit around espousing and dictating everything that's wrong with the world 24-7 without also trying to do something about it or without enjoying your life personally and not letting it affect your well-being? Have you counteracted the negative effects of Tory rule by complaining about them? The real villains and of the world don't care how cleverly you articulate how bad they are. Don't narrativize your life away to make yourself feel better. What are your thoughts achieving? Remember who the real enemy is. To truly strive towards optimism and idealism in all that you do, even in the mundane, is infinitely more rebellious than any cynical rumination and navel-gazing. Optimism and idealism are the only true ways to live life in a revolutionary way. Don't separate yourself from everyone and everything else just to make yourself feel important. That's just my anti-nihilist, uh, anti-rumination rant. I don't know if it came out, came off well. You get it all here. I don't know how to end it now. That was longer than I thought what I'd written there. I don't know. I'm going to have to listen to this back and if that was at all worthwhile to put in. It might not be. In which case, you're welcome that I saved you from it. If you did hear it, I'm sorry. I think we've reached the end of the video. Because I know that these animation time lapses can get a bit boring towards the end. Because I'm just sort of redrawing the same thing over and over. And it's hard to make out exactly what I'm doing. Um, I hope you enjoyed it though. I hope you're doing alright out there. I hope you're enjoying your creative projects and I hope you're getting by and I hope you're surviving out there. I wish you well. I'll update you more on all these arty things that are gonna happen and hopefully the next time you see me I'll be doing some sort of Dungeons Dragons Baldur's Gate thing maybe. Hopefully soon. Uh, thanks for watching though. Thanks for watching my last video. Got quite a lot of views on that one. Maybe I named it something good. I don't know. Got a feeling there's not as many Sable fans out there as there are Disco Elysium fans. But, but we'll see. 